All right. And I'm going to be trying to make sure I don't give you guys too much reverb. All right. React music is what I'm here to talk about. My name is Nathan Smith. I'm a consultant here at Object Partners. My Twitter is Nogs. You can find me on GitHub at also at Nogs MPLS. All right, React Music. Write React, make beats. Uh, if you want the slides to this presentation, go to that bit.ly link, uh, bit.ly react-music-minneapolis, or, react or MPLS, rather. All right, so what is React Music? React Music is basically just a React wrapper around the Web Audio API, which is native in almost all, I think all, uh, modern browsers. Uh, I like to call it like the, nec the next level MIDI. Um, you can go to the repo there, GitHub Formable Labs slash React dash music. Formable Labs has done a lot of other things like the Victory Graphing Framework, Radium CSS and JS Framework, and a bunch of other stuff. They've been pretty on point lately. And you can learn more about the Web Audio API uh, at MDN. So why do we want to do this? Well, first off, music itself is generally composed of patterns. Uh, so that lends itself to a pretty good area of exploration when it comes to programming and computing. In fact, a lot of uh, early and even current AIs and neural networks and machine learning and all that are trying to create music. That's a very common use case for AI uh, because it's just there's a lot of patterns in it, and that's what computing's good at. Um, and also, why are we using React for this? Because why the heck not, right? Sure, it may not be the best way to interact with the web audio API, but uh, I don't see why you can't experiment. I really believe that experimenting with technologies and pushing them to their limits and using them in ways that you never thought to use them before really lets you learn. You either learn the framework or the tech more deeply, or you figure out a new concept, a new idea that wasn't out there before that can actually be successful. And I firmly believe that when we push the limits of technology, that's where we start to see creativity and innovation arise. So with that in mind, let's get into the components and sort of the API of React Music. I'm going to go tr kind of fast because we're running a little bit short on time. But the main component, the sort of top level component for React Music is the song component. And it takes one prop that's required, and that's the tempo prop. I'm going to be talking a lot about music terminology. I'm going to try and explain most of it as I go through, because uh, I know not everybody is educated in music terminology. Um, tempo is basically the beats per minute. It's the heartbeat of a song. It's whenever you're nodding your head to a beat, or tapping your foot, or snapping your fingers. That's basically going to be the tempo in some form or another. And so this is going to define how fast or how slow your song is. Generally, most songs are between 60 and 140. Those are kind of on the edges. It's probably more like 80 and 120. Uh, it's pretty rare you'll find a lot of songs that are faster or slower than that. <coughs> All right, so that's the song component. It sets the timing for your, uh, it sets the actual timing for your song. Inside of there, you have the sequencer component. And this is where the magic starts to happen. This, the sequencer is basically a loop machine. And you're basically defining any of the children, which are going to be your uh, instruments, your synthesizers, or your samples, any of the children within the sequencer are going to loop and replay, depending on what props you put into this component. So the sequencer gives, has two props that are required, so resolution and bars. So this is where things are going to get a little hard to explain if you don't have too much music uh, background. But the resolution is defined, you're defining how many steps are in a bar. So a bar in music is basically just sort of lets you know piece, chunks of music, right? They're based on the time of the tempo that you set before. <clears throat> and so the steps, in, in this case, we have 16 in the resolution. This has 16 steps. React Music currently only supports 4-4 time. So 
On that note, I would suggest you only use 4, 8, 16, 32, and 64 as a number in here. I don't know if you use different numbers in here how that will change your song. Um, but uh, basically a step is going to be, what you're defining here with the number 16 is basically what's the shortest note you can play. So with the 16, we're saying 16th note, right? So a note is defined basically, the way you talk about notes is relative to the bar. So a whole note takes up the whole space of the bar, half note takes up half of the bar, quarter takes a quarter, so on and so forth. Rarely will you ever need anything faster than a 16th or a 32nd note. Uh, there's really no practical point for it, um, to be honest, because by that time you might as well just glide through the note. Uh, and then we get to define, so that's, 16 is how many beats or how many steps, how many notes are possible in any one bar before it loops again. And then we define bars, which is how many bars we can have. So in this case, we have 16 steps and we have two bars. That means we have 32 possible steps before it stops and loops around again. I know that was a lot to intake if you're not used to music uh, terminology, but hopefully as I go through this, you'll understand when we get to some examples. So that's the sequencer. The sequencer, like I said, is just a loop machine. Uh, now we get into the sort of sounds, right? So the first one is the sampler component, and this is basically just like it sounds, right? You basically just have a sample or a audio file of some kind on your machine, and you want to play it. So the two props are sample and steps. Sample is just a path to your uh, sound file. And the steps, in this case on the sampler, is going to be what steps during a bar will this sample play. So 0, 4, 8, 12 is going to be basically hitting right on the beat, like this, right? 0, 4, 8, 12, 0, 4, 8, 12, we're repeating the bar, we're repeating the beat over and over again. <clears throat> now we could put in some craziness and have it be like 3.2545, 8.75, and you can start messing with when things come in on the beat. And it might sound really odd at first, but once you start messing with that, and it starts repeating itself through the sequencer over and over, you start to get a rhythm, uh, and it can get really fun. So again, the, the steps in this component is just when your sound file plays. It does not define the duration of your sound, your sound file. It's going to play for however long your sound file actually is. So if your sound file is longer than the bar or steps are defined, you're going to start looping the sound. You're going to get a lot of feedback and reverb. It's going to sound really weird. But maybe that's what you want. All right, that's a sampler component. Now we have the synth component. Now this is where this is where I was talking about sort of like next level MIDI. This is kind of neat. So the synth component is actually, I call it digital sound via calculus. And that's basically just a way to describe an oscillator. Um, so we all kind of have the idea of sound being a wave, right? Sound's a wave. And so oscillators uh, basically is a sound device that you can change the structure of that wave for all points and purposes. Uh, to however you want it to be. And that's going to change the note, how that note comes out. So your general one is going to be a sine, right? Just your general parabolic sort of wave going up and down. There's a bunch of other, uh, bunch of other ones that you can use. In this project, you can use sine, triangle, square, or sawtooth. I'll let you figure out a little bit what that might look like. Uh, and now the steps in the synth component are a lot different than the steps in the sampler component. Sampler, we just defined when we wanted to play, what beat we wanted to play on, and that was it, and then we let it go. Since we're actually creating and defining the note that's being played here, we need to define when we want that uh, note to start, how long we want that note to play, and what note it is actually going to play. Uh, so that's basically what each of those arrays is uh, inside of steps. So well, here we have zero, that means it's gonna start right on the, right when the bar starts, right? Right when that loop comes back, it's going to start playing F sharp of the second octave. That's what that F pound sign two. 
Pound sign means sharp in music terminology. And it's going to last for four steps. So four of those 16th notes in this case, which is equivalent to a quarter note, or I think. <laughs> and uh, the thing that's cool about the synth component is that you can do chords. You can play multiple notes all at the same time. That's what that little second line in second array there is doing. Now we're playing a D note in the second octave and an F sharp note in the second octave. And when I say octave, uh, that is basically uh, how low or high pitched your note is going to be. You can do a quick like Google image search for octave notes uh, numbers or whatever, and you'll see what these align to as far as uh, music, uh, like sheet music. Although if you know, if you know sheet, if you can read sheet music, then you already understood what I said. Uh, and that last line is just showing you uh, the notation for a flat note. So maybe I should use a different note than B, but that's the first thing there is B, that's note B. The second B means it's flat. And then three means of the third octave. So we can do sharps, flats, chords, all that kind of stuff. So that's the synth component. Now we have the monosynth, and this one is a little different than the synth. It's monosynth because it can only play one note at a time. We cannot do chords with the monosynth, but we can glide and slide through notes if our step duration overlaps with each other. So in this case, we have something that starts right at zero, and it lasts for four steps, and then we play another note at the third step, and that lasts for eight steps. So we can see that it overlaps between three and four. On the other, uh, in the synth component, you would just start playing, they would just overlap and play at the same time. What the monosynth will do is actually glide and slide up to that note, playing through some of those notes at the same time. You can think of this as an action that you would normally see a trombone player do, or a kazoo, right? There's no actual levers or notes that you play from one to another. You just sort of slide through the range of notes all at once. So that's what the monosynth can do. Then there are much, much more advanced uh, things that you can do uh, with filters and effects uh, that come with React Music. I'm not going to get into those too much because it is quite a lot to learn. And it's, that's where you can do some really complex stuff with your sounds. Uh, but if you're interested, go check that out. All right, so that's enough talking about that. Uh, you probably want to actually hear some stuff, I imagine. So first, I want to say thank you to, I'm going to murder this last name, but Simon Brockloitis. Uh, on Twitter, it's Simon Swiss. Uh, I actually was writing this talk, and like three days ago, a guy in Australia gave a talk on React Music, and I saw him do it, or I saw like the response of it. And I looked at what he had done, and it was so much better than what I had made that I asked him if I could use it. And full credit to what I do at the end of this, other than the song, you'll know who the credit goes to for the song, I think. But the GUI and everything, full credit goes to Simon Swiss. So I just wanted to put that out there. OK. And I didn't hook up my mouse, because I got to be a little bit more dexterous on this. Dexterous. OK. There we go. And I will zoom this in, have no fear. All right, so here we are inside uh, a React music uh, file. I'm not going to go into how you install. It's just npm install react-music. I'm not going to go into any of this other craziness happening at the top of the component. That's just for the GUI. Uh, what we really care about here is right in here ignoring the analyzer component. Again, that's just for visualization. So our song component, we've got a tempo of 120. The plain uh, prop is just the state so we know when we can turn it on and off uh, in the GUI uh, in the browser. And then our sequencer, we can see that we have a resolution of 16, just like we had in the example, and we have bars of 2. So one thing you'll first notice uh, is that this doesn't go f to full 32, and that's because there's going to be a little pause at the end of this song before it starts again. And so all we're doing here is playing single notes one at a time, 
and we're defining when, what beat they will actually fall on or start, and then how long their duration for each one will be. We're not overlapping uh, any notes. This is a pretty simple um, uh, song that we're going to create here. And I almost forgot if you guys want to be able to hear it. <coughs> Sorry, there's a lot of moving parts here right now. Uh, let's hope that this actually works on a lot of levels. Anybody know that song? Totoro? Anyone? Anyways, it's a Studio Ghibli um, movie, My Neighbor Totoro. It's a very good movie. You should check it out. <laughs> so that's just a real simple song. Uh, now we're going to do something a little bit more complex here. Uh, and I'm not going to live code any of this because there's a lot, one thing I'll, note, I'll say about all this is there's a lot of trial and error in creating these things um, because you basically, whoops, G3, oh no. This is the problem switching between Mac and Windows is that you get your control all messed up. All right, control and command. All right, I'm gonna comment these out. I'm gonna show you one thing that's really neat about uh, this whole uh, project. And that is that it has doo -doo -doo, hot module reloading built into it. So that allows you to do some pretty neat stuff. So let's see if we can. Oh, you minimize. Go away. We don't care about you. There we go. So let's see, fingers crossed, how the, if this works. Barely hear it. There you go. So that's just a kick. It's just your drum kick. Let me go a little bit over here. Again, 0, 4, 8, 12. 0, 4, 8, 12. And that's a sample of a drum kick, just hitting the bass drum, right? So now let's get some hi hats in there. We'll save. All right? So these are eighth notes. The, basically, it's, the, you know, 0, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. It's running faster. It's running exactly twice as fast as the kick. And let's get a good snare going. And one thing I want to note, I want to show you is that You'll notice that we have two sequencers here, right? We have a sequencer with bar one, resolution 16, and then we have a sequencer over here with bars two, resolution 16. You might think that these are the same, but the fact that we have the bars are, uh, of two on the bottom means that it will loop at different times than the one above it. So you could have multiple sequencers in a, uh, in a React music project, and you can have multiple instruments within any given sequencer, as you see with the samplers up top. And it's not just you can do only samplers. You can mix in synths and monosynths and all that. So anybody think they have an idea what song this is? A little quiet. I gotta change the gain on everything. So maybe if we uh, wanted to hear that a bit better, let's see if we can do this. Let's do this one. We went up a little bit there, right? Okay, so let's stop that. So I wanted to show you with those two examples some variation you can have in any given, um, in any given uh, React music project. Uh, before I get on to the next part, are there any questions? All right, you two or? Uh, play that again, like take the different types of sauce and where it's made. Good one, yes, of course. Uh, so the question was, can I play this again and change the different types to different oscillating types? So, it's a little reverb there. Uh, 
square, triangle, or sawtooth? Triangle is what I heard first. A little bit of a difference. Let's do sawtooth, see what that sounds like. Yeah. And let's do square next. Crazy, right? I should have started off with one of those. There was a lot louder. All right, any other questions? Do I live code or rave? Hopefully both now. Oh, I'll also mention that React Music was created by Ken Wheeler, who works for Formidable Labs. Formidable Labs, but uh, follow him. He's got a lot of crazy stuff he's doing with React. Okay. No other questions? Because I am going to attempt to do something that I seem to have about a 20% success rate on. OK. All right. Ah, warm up these fingers. See if I can remember all this. All right, so this is the part that I mentioned is Salmon Swiss on Twitter. Uh, he made this sort of GUI. It basically allows me to change the gain of any given instrument. Uh, they're uh, bound to a button on my keyboard, as you can see with D, S, A, yada, yada, yada. Uh, we actually have a Moog filter uh, implementation, and we can do stuff with feedback. So, so first off, let's see if this works correctly. Oh, no, is it not? That person's really smart. He said I have to hit play, and uh, he's correct. All right. So first, I'm just going to show you like what some of these filters and reverb does. So the Moog filter is on a slide here, and we're just cha all this entire time we're just changing the cutoff prop. Right. Pretty, pretty interesting sounds you can make there. And there's a lot of other filters. Then we can start adding reverb or delay with feedback. And now it just keeps going. Da, 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 da. And uh, eventually that gets very unpleasant. <laughs> All right. You want to hit the drum? You want to get the kick? Yeah. All right. Let's see if I can do this. Oh, my J's not working. Wait a second. Oh, there it is. My, that's it. Told you, 20% success rate. All right, here we go. Oh, this is a lot more difficult than it sounds. Anyways, I totally did not do that as clean as I wanted to do. Give me one more shot.
No, nope. oh well. Anyways, very, very cool stuff that you can do with all of this. That's all I got. <laughs> I, I did it on a different keyboard before, and that was very s foolish of me. My J key kept sticking. All right, any questions now? No? OK, so I want to say thank you again to Object Partners uh, for letting us host this. Uh, we already have next month uh, scheduled. Uh, and it's going to be about React Native. Let me, let me focus in on my face. There we go. Hi. Um, it's going to be on React Native, uh, which, for those of you who may not know, is about uh, basically the React team, while React is for web uh, apps, React Native is for uh, mobile apps, right? So it allows for building onto iOS, Android, and actually universal Windows platform, UWP. So really cool stuff there. I'm going to be, well, obviously, I'm helping run the thing. I'll be there. Um, so check that out. We are meeting every third Thursday of the month. Uh, we don't think that conflicts with any other tech meetups that we know of. Uh, hopefully not. Uh, hopefully we're not competing with any of them, because uh, we want everybody to join all the meetups and support the community. Uh, what else? is important. Oh, we are going to be sending a survey after all of this, so please uh, give us your feedback, answer those questions. Like I said, let us know if there's different food you'd want, uh, the types of talks you would like to happen through this meetup. Um, we will have, we currently do not, but we will have a code of conduct. We want this to be as inclusive an event as possible. Um, and I think Say that one more time. Feedback.reactmtos.io. Feedback, what he said. <laughs> You'll get in an email. Um, so please fill that out so we can make this uh, as good of a meetup as we possibly can. Uh, I think that's all, unless anyone thinks there's still pizza, beer, all of that. Uh, again, if any of you are uh, working in a company that would like to help sponsor the event, Object Partners is doing a whole heck of a lot. Uh, but obviously, more sponsors, the better. We can do more things. Um, and it might help me from pulling my hair out um, with getting some different equipment. Uh, all right. Thank you so, so much for coming to this first React Minneapolis meetup. Uh, the response has been greater than I thought it would be. There's a, quite a lot of you here. Um, so please tell your friends. Uh, show up next time, RSVP, uh, and have a good night. Oh, and two places that are good to go to before and after the event are Sociable Ciderworks. We literally share a back parking lot with them. And then across the street uh, in that building is Tattersall Distillery. Uh, and that's a nice place. They're both literally within like two minutes of walking or less. Uh, so if you're at the next few meetups in the future, if you're looking at, for something to do before or after, those are two cool places to go. Anything else? Questions? Cool. Thanks, everyone.